We had a bottle of red last night to celebrate. And, it, well, essentially three bottles of red and three bottles of port. Unleashed in Tassie. You earn so many beers when you get there under your own steam. <laughs> Shit. <clears throat> uh, the company was great. You know, you got the dry humour of Maddie and the, and the storytelling, you know, sort of outrageousness of Dan. It was a great combo. You know, crossing Bass Strait is it's an iconic piece of water, and that's part of the trip. But a big part of it was just um, sharing, going down at this Ferno group with with some great blokes. We worked out today or yesterday or <laughs> whatever that I've been. I've now been in Australia 22 days, and I've been on, on expedition 15 of them. It's been a bit of a whirlwind. I haven't been able to process it all, but I've got a couple of beers and I've got good friends around me, and we've landed so. Unbelievable. Whenever you go through an intense phase of experience, the other side of it is a really empty, almost overwhelming space in a sense, because this big thing has come to a finish. I don't dwell in it too much because I know that it's just going to chip away for the next six months or a year. I've got to write about this now. My PhD is on this very moment sitting here and what's just taken place. It's really interesting watching my former self. What I'm thinking, you know, I'm looking over this Bass Strait, recrossing it in the ferry. I knew that I was on the cusp then of having to unpack that experience. And here it is, 12 months later, I've got the PhD, The Secret Life of the Sea Kiker. It's been a heck of a year of really sort of wrestling with ideas of how to theorize something that's so lived. And I suppose, like any human too, I'm trying to do it and fit it around all of this great regular life. Five episodes get made of Bass by Kayak and they represent the expedition. It was really a great moment actually, pushing publish. And they go live to the world, to this new audience. So why are we still here? What's episode six? Well, it's been 18 months since the expedition and in that time I've been both researcher and filmmaker. So what is it in the last 18 months that's come to the surface? Well, that's what episode six will show you, the less obvious uh, and some of the narrative that was was sort of an unseen thread of episodes one to five. It just makes for this incredible journey that has great symmetry. Cut. Nah. And what a wonderful thing, what a privilege. It was a real relief, yet dangerous thing I've ever done. Matt's doing his thing, Dan's doing his. I confronted this fear as a young adult. With time on your hands, you head inland. Yeah. It was really hard to narrate the film. You get back and the trip, let's say this represents the trip, about 15 days, 15 pages worth. You get back and you have all of this data, all of this film footage, and you've got to cut that into six episodes. So what these represent then is all the time after the expedition hundreds of days, thousands of hours, all the inspirations and story tangents I can take to tell the story. So the trick is, which one do I follow or which main thread do I follow to tell, you know, the epiphanies, the, the breakthroughs, the trials, the errors? That's where you become a filmmaker. You start to trust what vision has been shot. And the filmmaker's toolkit nowadays is loaded full of tricks.
drone has revolutionised the filmmaking game. What it shows, more than any other form of filmmaking before, is this huge sense of scale. This big fractured world of sea and land. You're kind of chasing horizons the whole time wonderful sense of movement it brings with it. I've always placed myself somewhere on the chart or the map before. Well now I can see it, you know, the drone gives you that ability to be above. And it brings with it that great sense of intimacy. What do I talk about when people ask me about Bass by Kayak? I nearly always head back to that long paddle day. I know Matt and Dan are the same. I thought that was an awesome day. I didn't feel good for a lot of it, but uh, the second half I, I came good and I absolutely loved it. And I loved how the group hung together and took care of each other. And As the wind died, the sun began to set. It was just sending streams of pink and orange and yellow sun down across the ocean. The sea state calmed. And that was the one moment that you went, I'm gonna make this. But the fact that you're as far from land as you've ever been under your own devices, that's really empowering. Scholars talk about this idea of liminality. And it's essentially a sea kiker departing land as a form of resistance to go and redefine themselves at sea. In that I watch this vision now and I see this landmass over my bow and I feel the depth, my threshold of how far I had to go before land kind of drew me back in. Every so often as a filmmaker, you stumble upon footage that's really insightful. This shot here, this is Matt and Dan. They'd met each other 20 minutes earlier. I'm off busy doing my own thing off to the side and here's Dan giving over his back hatch to Matt. There was instant rapport between these two very different people. Just put your hand on his knee. <laughs> 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 to the point where, independent of me, they were, they were friends in their own right. They'd go off and walk together, have cups of tea together, share stories and jokes. You know, in England, for example, People like Matty, they go to special schools. <laughs> no one really talks to them. It's all like it's all a bit, it's all a bit behind closed doors. But uh, the fact that they allow people like him into the public is great. Hey, catch this! <laughs> <laughs> and so what it did for the first time, i had been mostly solo for ten years, is I got to be part of a small team. The Whiskery Old Sea Captain Joseph Conrad said once that going to sea was really about homecoming. You know, where you return to land and you're grounded and you slowly unpack your boat at the same time you unpack what took place out at sea. I guess you could say as the reality of the experience fades, it's replaced with storytelling. And in this case, a film series and a research project. I'd argue that home is where you make meaning of experiences where it comes to life and ultimately it shapes where you go next. <laughs>